Hi, my name is Dash, and I'm a lead developer advocate here at Snowflake. Today, I'm super excited to show you how to get started with Snowpark and Snowflake using Python worksheets. Before we get started, let's review what Snowpark is and what Python worksheets are. Let's start with Snowpark. Simply put, it allows you to interact with Snowflake using languages like Python, Java, and Scala in order to query and process your data. This also means that you can write data applications and create data pipelines using these languages. And regardless of the language, these applications run on and take advantage of the same distributed computation on Snowflake's Elastic Engine as your SQL workloads. Now, ha having said that, today we're going to focus on Snowpark for Python. Now, next up is Python worksheets. They are a brand new type of worksheet in SnowSight, and they help you get started with Snowpark really easy and quickly without having to use an ID or install anything which is pretty amazing. With these worksheets, you can develop data pipelines, train machine learning models, and build data applications directly inside Snowflake. What's more, these worksheets can also be easily converted into stored procedures so you can schedule your Snowflake applications just by clicking on a button. Now let's review what you're going to learn by completing this quick start guide. The link for this quick start is going to be in the comment section, so please look for that. You're going to learn how to load data from Snowflake tables into Snowpark data frames. You're going to learn how to perform some data analysis and transformations using these data frames. You'll use functions like pivot and also join data from multiple tables. You'll see how to save the transform data back into a Snowflake table. And finally, you're going to see how to deploy your code as a Python stroke procedure. Now let's get started. So there are two different paths. The first one is for those users that do not have a Snowflake account. In that case, click on the link, which will let you create a free 30-day trial account. And it's going to include one-click setup with pre-configured environment to run the Snowpark Python code included in this quick start guide. After you've created and activated your new account, Logging back in will land you on the same setup lab page as described below. Now, if you already have a Snowflake account, clicking on this link here will take you to the setup lab page. And then clicking on this button will get your environment set up. Now the setup will create all the necessary objects like a database, schema, tables, and load all the sample data for you to use in your Python worksheet. As you can see, this only took about 10 seconds. Now here's your worksheet. And all you have to do is click on this run button to execute the code presented in this worksheet. But before we do that, let's take a few minutes to understand the code snippets and see what's going on in this worksheet. And for that, Let's go back to the quick start guide. Okay. So this section describes how to load data in our Snowpark data frames. Now, the very first thing we're going to do here is import Snowpark Python library. And then we're going to load data from two different tables, campaign spend and monthly revenue. In this case, we're using session.table to load data from our tables into Snowpark data frames. There are other ways to load data into data frames as well, as described below. The first one is session.sql, where you can provide a SQL statement to load the data into a data frame. You can also load data from CSV files, Parquet files, and also create data frame from scratch using session.create data frame if you already have some data on your client. Now, the next section describes how to transform this data that we've loaded into our data frames. For that, first, we're going to import all the functions that we need for this particular start guide. Then we're going to transform the campaign spend data so that we can see total cost per year per month per channel. For that, we're going to use group by and aggregate functions. Now, there are hundreds of other functions that you can use on these data frames. And for a full list, you can click on this link. And in order to see these transformations, you can call dot show or use dot show function on a data frame and the output of that will be printed under output tab. We're going to look at that when we go back to our worksheet. 
Now, let's transform the campaign spend data further so that each row will represent total cost across all channels per year per month. For this, we're going to use pivot and sum SOPAC data frame functions. Now, this transformation will allow us to join the revenue table such that we will have all our input features and target variable in a single table, for example, for model training. Now, again, in order to view the transformations, we can call dot show. And you will see the output in the output tab. Next, we're going to transform the revenue data into revenue per year per month using group by and aggregate functions. Again, we're calling dot show so that we can see the transformations in the output tab. Next, we're going to join total spend and total revenue per month across all channels. This will allow us to have our features and target variable into a single table for further analysis and also for model training. SOPARC also makes it really easy to look at the data frame query and execution plan using explain SOPARC data function. The next section shows us how to save the transform data back into a new table, which can be used for further analysis and also for model training that, like we discussed before. For that, we're going to use save as table API. We're passing the name of the table. Now, this section describes how to view the returned data from our worksheet. So one of the return types of Python worksheet is of a table type. And setting that in our case will enable us to view and return the transform data as a SOPAC data frame. Now, optionally, you can also deploy this worksheet as a Python sort procedure so that you can schedule it using Snowflake tasks. And to deploy this worksheet, all you have to do is a click on deploy button and then follow the instructions. Okay, so let's go back to our worksheet. Now, Okay, so here's our worksheet, and what I'm going to do is click on Run. Okay. This will take less than a minute to produce the results and also output under the Output tab. Here's all the code that's being executed right now. It's the same code that we also walked through in our Quick Start Guide. There we go. So here's our returned Snowpark data frame, which includes all the transform data from both tables. Here's the return value. And all the output that we printed using dot show or print statement is can be seen on this tab. Awesome. Let's see how we can deploy this worksheet as a short procedure. All you have to do is click on this button, give it a name, and hit deploy. There we go. And to look at the details, you can click on this link, which will take you to the actual page where you see your sort procedure. That's it, folks. Thank you so much for watching. And we'd love your feedback. So please fill out the feedback form. And as next steps, I highly encourage you to go through the data engineering pipelines with SOPOC for Python Quick Start Guide, which is linked right there under next steps. Thanks again so much, and I'll see you next time.